Ladies and gentlemen and everybody, but we thank you for your continued support, or new support if this is your first time. Oh boy, guys. Looking back on my previous couple of videos, I did not realize just how bad this game is. When you're knee deep in the sewer, sometimes you forget how bad it smells. And that's what we got right here, folks. Whew. The frame rate on this game is dropping more and more. Like for this upcoming section of the game, I got a lovely frame rate between 5 and 10. It's going to be awful. So, imagine just playing it, folks. Just imagine playing it. And I'm serious about this. This is some real talk right now. Do not play this game. I mean, even as a kind of ironic, oh, I like bad things kind of thing. No. No, no, no. Don't play it even for that. It's really just awful. I tell you what, if you really want to simulate the experience of this game, download Unity, just get a bunch of free assets and just slap them together and throw in a bunch of weirdly translated English. Because that's pretty much what we got here. <sighs> but I'm being negative already. I haven't even shown you what we in store for. Well, let's carry on with the continuation of the over-analysis of Dark Years Part 3. I would say previously on, but I'm not entirely sure what happened. A dude got killed, we were a detective, now the protagonist is changing yet again. Well, perhaps you should drink a beer. I know I am. Well, there's no use in sitting here and thinking of horrible thoughts. I'd better look round to find an escape route. Yeah, there's no such thing as good voice acting in this game! But to be fair, if that's what you want to call it, I think most of the voice actors in this game are the developers or the developers' friends. And considering this game was made by Iranians in Iran, well, that could explain the accents and the crummy English voice acting. I imagine it sounds a lot better in their native tongue, but unfortunately, I don't know Persian. So I have to deal with voices like this all the time now. Ah. So anyway, we in an area with a looping soundtrack and a mission to escape from prison. Really, that's what we're here to do. We're here to escape from prison. Because this pretty much follows up directly from the house blowing up from the first video. Yeah, a house blew up in the first video and this guy ended up in prison because of it. I guess it makes sense. Maybe they thought he blew up the house. Although there was no information in between, so... It's pure speculation on my part. But then again, so is most of the plot of this game. The nail has come out of this wooden bench. I may need it. Yeah, he's right and the object we need to use it on is right in front of him. Yeah, we're going to use this nail to help pick a lock. It may come as a great surprise to you that not only did this guy have an extra piece of metal in his pocket to make enough picks to pick a lock, although how the hell is he using the nail? These look like just lock picks, but whatever! It doesn't matter! Continuity doesn't matter in this game. Let's just talk about the gameplay for a second. Let's just talk about this damn puzzle. It's broken. Flat out, it is broken. It does not work. There is no way of being able to figure out intuitively how to pick the lock. You may be thinking, oh, you gotta be smart and kind of angle it rightly. No, you're a fool. You have to brute force your way through this because, believe it or not, even in this incredibly simple little mini game, the controls don't work. The mouse movement is all or nothing sometimes, and other times it's insanely precise. And it's all using the same mouse, making the same movements. The keys, they just, pff, they're a joke if they want to work or not. And sometimes it wouldn't work, and then all of a sudden, oh, you picked the lock after just banging on the keys long enough. Yeah, it broke it. It's awful. And I had to do this puzzle one too many times. If that's enough foreshadowing for you. <laughs> Yeah, I just choppily ran past the guard there. Again, I apologize. I was only getting about five frames around this point in the game. And no, my computer's not crap. This game just is. So performance issues aside, I thought I was pretty much scot-free by this point. Yeah, he ran past the guard. He didn't seem to do anything. Not that I could really see what the guard was doing or where he was, because again, the camera is atrocious in this game. So I figured as long as I keep running, I'd leave the prison somehow or die in the process. Oh, 
Apparently I got caught. Yeah, no audio cue, no game over, no nothing, just I was going around for a while, then oh ha, he failed. Restart. Just, just how terrible is this? I mean, basic stuff, folks. Basic stuff is missing. But beyond that, how the hell was I even caught? Yeah, I ran past the guard, but he didn't really chase after me or do anything because... Well, that probably would have been difficult for this developer to do. So I guess if you're seen at all, you fail. So this is a mandatory stealth section with an awful camera, choppy frame rate, and just atrocious game design. Oh my word, this is going to be a nightmare, isn't it? So yeah, I picked the lock and tried to figure out where the guard was. And while I could pick the lock, it was pretty much an impossibility to see where the guard was unless he was right in front of me. So after a while of unsuccessfully being able to see anything, I threw caution into the wind and just ran. And that's when I noticed the guard just kind of goes through a door. So I guess I'm just supposed to wait for a little bit after picking the lock and then the guard just disappears for reasons of convenience. Now I know what you're thinking, folks. You're like, that didn't seem too terrible. Once you figured out the timing of it all, seemed like a breeze, in fact. Yeah. Just wait and see. But first, I have to make my way through this area. It's pretty vacant and empty, until eventually, I run into another guard. Oh, time to distract the soldier. Yeah, that went smoothly. As of the next few attempts. Yeah. Lots of trial and error here. Lots of trial and error. So it took me a while to figure out that I needed an item downstairs. There was a newspaper on the guard's desk, or at least that's what I think it is. And I needed that to distract the guard upstairs. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how do you do this? <laughs> oh, it's kind of dumb. But first, let's just soak in how terrible, and I mean terrible, this section is. Because I really want to stress to you that this is awful. And I really want you guys to see what I go through to make some of these videos because, whew, where's that beer at? Now here's one thing that happened more than once while playing through this part of the game. The game just stopped recognizing items. Like for instance this nail that I'm trying to use on the lock here rather desperately. It just glitched out. It no longer works. No matter how many times I click on it, it just doesn't acknowledge that I have a nail in my hand. I had to completely restart the game in order to make it work again. Multiple times. Multiple times. And then there's always our dear friend, the camera. It just is useless. Utterly and completely useless. You can never see anything you need to see, and there's no way to wheel it into the right spot. Now I know I've gone on about this for a while, but again, this needs to be stressed, and this will be the last time, folks, because the list of grievances with this game are all reoccurring. Everything's still as bad as it was in the previous video, so I'll harp on it no more. But seriously, this is a stealth section, and you can't see anything important. It's a lot of guesswork to figure out when the guard actually goes away. You have to wait for some audio cues, and sometimes they don't work. You just kind of have to end up waiting for a while and then just run and hope you don't get caught. And yeah, you can't save anywhere because this game doesn't feature that. There is no in-game saves, which probably would have helped a lot for this section of the game. If there is something on the table, the ward will get busy with it and I can get out. Now, I don't know what get busy with it implies in Iran, but over here, well, that must be a dirty magazine we got. So, this is how you distract the guard. I know, it's right out of Metal Gear Solid, except without any of the actual good gameplay. So anyway, you randomly place a newspaper on this table, which you should bear in mind, the guard cannot see. He never patrols into this room, and there is no way of looking inside of it. Otherwise, I would have been caught by now. So it is quite literally an impossibility that the guard could see that I've placed anything on this table. Yet somehow, the moment it's placed, he instantly knows it's there. I know, it's like it's a triggered event or something. So, if you don't know this, and you're trying to figure out what the hell to do next, it's possible that the guard will see you, and you'll get caught, and then you'll have to redo it all again. Yeah, yeah, that happened to me. So the key here is to place down the paper, and then to run all the way back to the top of the level, and then just kind of hope after a while that the guard's looking at the paper. And then you can leave. And then you can leave. 
Yeah, this is me trying to figure out where the door is, because how the hell am I supposed to tell which one's the exit? It's not marked in any way. Better go before anyone notices. So it sounds like our hero just hit puberty there. Now I want to tell you one thing, folks. This section of the game took me the longest to complete. How long did it take you to beat this section of the game, guy? Well, 40 minutes. Yeah, 40 minutes dealing with an awful camera, broken and glitchy gameplay, confusing puzzle mechanics, and yeah, I just general terrible stealth. Huh. Yeah, in my lifetime, that's one of the dumber things I've done with my time. Right, so our newsman escaped from prison. Why did he need to escape from prison, you ask? Well, have you ever been to prison? It's a pretty terrible place. But yeah, I don't know why. I'm assuming it has something to do with the precious information. Maybe he's on a time limit. Maybe assassins are going to murder his family unless he gets this information to them before dawn. But other than just making stuff up, I don't know. I guess he just doesn't want to be in prison. The documents are in Iran and I'm wanted here by the police. What can I do? I don't know. And the only reason why you're wanted by the police now is because you escaped from prison. You gotta put yourself into this situation, man. Now that the doctor father me is in London, I should inform him about the dangers of cop. Sir, what did you say? Come on, let's rewind that and listen to that one more time. I should inform him about the dangers of cop. Now, I don't think I have a dirty mind, at least not any dirtier than anyone else. But to me, it really sounded like this guy said he better warn the doctor about the dangers of cock. So I guess there's some rooster epidemic sweeping around, because otherwise, well, where is this place again? But of course, he doesn't mean cock. That'd be a more interesting game. He means coup, the coup d'etat. You know, when someone takes over the government, usually the military, which might be referring to some historical event that happened in the 50s to Iran, but that's me knowing history. If you don't know any Iranian history, you'll have no clue what these guys are talking about, because up till now, absolutely nothing in this character's story, the newsman, made any reference to a coup. And as for the detective story, he was talking about corruption, so this comes out of nowhere. It's it's just something a game throws out there. It's like, oh my god, the newsman has to alert this doctor that you've never heard of about a coup that you'd never heard of before. This is heinous and terrible storytelling. And I'm not even sure if it's better in Persian, because if it's this direct, it's still pretty damn awful regardless of language. So anyway, we're here in jolly old London, England, soaking in the sights of this terrible post-apocalyptic unity-made world, and going to see a doctor, and warning him about a queue. And this is all on foot, just running through the streets of London. And oh, by the way, by the way, the map? Yeah, it doesn't match up to where you're at. Look, I'm going through apparently buildings. The map. The mini-map doesn't work in this game. How the hell you mess up the mini-map? I just, I don't even know. How do you not notice is a bigger question, but then again, that can be said about all this game. How do you not notice? At this point, I accept the developer is probably an amateur and just trying their best. But the publisher, Kiss, Kiss Limited, did you bother to play this game? Did you spend one second looking into it? You must have signed a brilliant contract with these guys because I just, I can't understand why you would look at this and be like, yeah, mm -hmm, we're going to publish this. Yeah, we're going to put our name on this game. <sighs> but oh yeah, the stealth section still carries on. If one of the coppers sees you, it's back to the start of the map. Rinse and repeat. Well, credit where credit is due, at least I got an audio cue there that I failed. But I also got to see this guy just fall into the world. Alright, let's just get to the part where I get to the part where I need to be in this game. <laughs> Wonderful. We've made it to where the doctor is, I guess. Where is this place? I don't know. Why are we going here? To warn him of a coup, apparently. So with all that said, we'll find out what happens next time on Overanalyze Adventures Dark Years. It'll be part four. <sighs> yeah, I'm keeping these videos short on purpose. I don't want to bombard you with too much terribleness at once. But hopefully, folks, I'll see you next time.